enjoy it. So he's going to have to read it, is he? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to read it, yeah? Yeah? I've only ever given up on a book once. So, mind you, he's quite a Lord of the Rings uh, territory, isn't he? It's actually not as long as it looks. I guess it's because it's on A4. It just looks. Yeah. You could actually put that down onto one page of a book about that thing. Don't look. And then this paper's it's all on one side, so. Fan, John. <laughs> it's a joke. Oh. Quote Sorry, John. I can't. Quote from John. Uh, uh. I like some science fiction. I like what I've read. Duncan, when are we going to have a chat with you when, when you get behind from away from that, that machine that you're using? Yeah, yeah sure, you bet. He's going to sit down. Let's have a chat. It's making me feel nervous. Oh, yeah, no. And you feel what? Right. Making me feel nervous. I'm nervous. Why? It's just silly. I won't know. But hey, ooh, maybe you can help. Oh. Yeah, fine. Wow. Will any of your friends see this? Yeah. Hi Ed, hi Steph. Yeah, hi Ed, hi Steph. Both, just in case you if Ed and Steph, you do see this. Ed, I I'm remember meeting you. But I think you see He says, why don't you give him a ring? That's right, that's what I said. Why don't you give me a ring? <laughs> You've got a phone, haven't you? So, hi, Duncan. Hiya. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. I'm fine, thanks. I'm all right. Very good. All right. Are you having a good time? Yeah. Are you here for the weekend? No, just for today. Just for today. Yes. And that's your book. I it certainly is. Nice. Masterpiece. Sorry, Whatever you do, don't lose it, okay? I will not. Ah, ah. How long did it take to write? It took two and a half years, virtually to the day. It took uh, from about mid-1993 to uh, the end of 1995, exa exactly two and a half years. And did you write, did you type it yourself? I typed it I, I, on a word, about three different word processors as my mother's typewriter. And you'll soon know which one's which, because it all go, starts going really wonky with my mum's typewriter. Because it's a bit sort of ancient. I think it would take me two and a half years just to type it. Never mind thinking of a book. What I do is I started off, uh, I started it off with... Uh, by writing it by hand and then about 18 months later I started writing up what I'd written by hand on, on a word processor but I continued to write the rest of it by hand and then when I finished the first copy I just concentrated completely on the second copy but I don't know whether that's how uh, other authors write it seems a very strange way to do it but uh, I did it and that's the way I did it and uh, about there was a massive real feeling of uh, Achievement. I think I opened a bottle of champagne when I finished it and shared it with Clover, my landlady. Uh, so yeah, if it doesn't get published, you can see, say to yourself, whenever you feel down in the dumps, I wrote, I wrote a novel and I completed it. Uh, uh, I've got about four people who are supposed to be reading it. Eddie's supposed to be reading it, but he's taking his time. And about three other people have got a copy of it. And they're all saying, oh, I like that bit where this, this, and this happens. But they don't seem to be able to get any further than the bit that they seem to be talking about, which is uh, very frustrating because I've had no feedback whatsoever. But, uh, I, you know, I just li live in hope. Uh, I did have an offer from Minerva Press to have it published, but I had to come up with uh, seven and a half thousand pounds. They'd put up with the other seven and a half thousand, and it'd be a joint publishing venture, but I just haven't got that kind of money uh, in a million years. So I had to say, I often asked them what uh, could 
Uh, get out of it. Could you publish it if they had put up all the cost uh, and got most of the profits? And they said no, it had to be a joint publishing venture. So I said, thank you very much, no thank you. Uh, oh, I've been bitten. I've been bitten. It's a shame. Well, it is a bit of a shame, but you think yourself as one door closes, another one will can always open. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying very hard in the States because I know there's a bigger market for all that type of stuff in the States. So that's where I'm. Uh, that's where I'm trying next. Uh, I've written to one uh, company and they wrote back and said they were impressed, but they didn't think it was really. Uh, for them, but they suggested I went and... Sorry. That's alright mate, no worries. And they suggested I what I did was uh, I went and uh, got a copy of the American uh, Christian Publishing uh, booklet, which I've got. And I've written to another company and that was about five months ago and I still haven't heard from them. I sent them the first three in the last three chapters, but I'm, uh, I'm going to chase them up about it because if they're not interested, well, I'll just go on to the next one. And you just keep going. I think it's a bit like you with dissident profit and everything, you've uh, you know you've had your, your highs and your lows, but you, I, I think you just keep bashing away at it, and that's what I intend to do, and I, I think that's what most people do. Uh, you, and you think about so many people who had the most tremendous problems trying to get off the ground with so many creative things, and then when they finally made it, all sorts of wonderful things happened. Uh, you just have to keep keep bashing on with it, I guess. But uh, as I say, I shall, I, I've done, got plans for other novels. I really started it because it was a film script that I couldn't possibly get filmed because it was just too complicated and with, with special effects and everything. And it was Eddie who suggested, why don't you write it as a novel? So I thought I'd have a go, and uh, that's it. But it was finished about 18 months ago now. Uh, so I think it's high time something pretty wonderful happens with it. I hope you're listening up there. <laughs> but, uh, but by the way, I hope this means that I can have an interview with you about Dissident Prophet. Maybe uh, <laughs> uh, we should interview Jonathan. Sorry? Over to Jonathan. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. My pleasure, thank you. Hi, John. Hi, John, how are you, mate? Yeah, hello to everyone there. Uh, cheers to your good health. What can I do for you, John, mate? <laughs> Very embarrassed here. It's nice weather, though. Here we are in Greenbelt, Greenbelt 97. So what's it like to be a top Hollywood actor? Well, man, it's just great. <laughs> <laughs> All those film scripts I keep getting, it's just brilliant. Maybe you should get together with And it's the girls, girls, man, it's the girls, I tell you, they're just so nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, mate. Next sensible question. Sorry. Oh, oh, another question. All right, mate. Well, we'll just have a chat. Yeah. Should we just have a chat? Yeah. Okay. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, Cameron Land. Bye, subject. All right. Here with me is Johnny Large, the drummer of Distant Profit. John, congratulations on a terrific gig. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Yes. Good. It's good fun. Right, and I understand it's been quite quiet uh, recently. Uh, yes. You've got an album coming out called We're Not Grasshoppers. Yes. And you've got, uh, you're all sort of like little insects, aren't you, in a classification box? Yeah, it's really rather poor artwork. His eyes look really good on the black and white photocopy cover. You're not impressed with it? I'm not impressed. Oh dear. Record companies don't let them design things for you. Right, oh right. So we watch it, it's got unconditional love on it, has it? Yes. And uh, Generation X? Uh, the... I think so. And hanging from your neck or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah it's got that. Wait, and has it got all the flip sides from the singles? Nah. Oh no. It... It's got some it may have some of them on. Yeah, but it's got some new tracks. Yeah. And have well, you got a copy of it yet? Um, no. There's only 150 pressed. Is that really? That few? Yeah. So what happens if I don't get it? What happens when I order it from Virgin Megastore? And they... Hopefully it will force the company to press some more. Right. For them. They're only, they've only released the album to fulfil um, the obligations of the contract. Right. 
That must be they haven't released it to actually sell it or to promote it. Because it's not in their nature to do that. So you've got a... Uh, you've recorded another album since. Uh, is there any, any news about that? But there's some of the some of the some of the uh, tracks that you played at the uh, at the gig. Well, they they were from that, weren't they? Yeah. This interview will terminate in ten seconds. But I mean, how, how uh, you, you, you told me that you're going to carry on until you. Guitarist, that guitarist, he's over there. Look. Indeed. Tom, Tom. I'm going to get him in a sec. And there's smudge. They'll talk about it. So are you, are you still going to carry on stop, for the moment? Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, yeah, we're still carrying on. But you keep going because I think you've got a really great future and I think you're a great band and I'm sure that eventually you'll get through all the muck and stuff get really big. Thanks. Tom. You just hang on in there, mate. Thanks for a great gig. You're welcome. That's somebody in